My guest on the show today is somebody who for the past couple of years has been a good friend of mine. We didn't serve directly together while we were in the core and we didn't meet till many years after we left the core when we kept coming across each other's paths in various different veteran circles. He's a very interesting man and he leads a very interesting life. He's known around the bazaars as Steel Johnson, a.k.a. The Magic Marine. He is a professional magician. He is an adventurer. He lives the van life, living out in the back of his highly modified Volkswagen van. He travels the country surfing. He travels the country on adventures and he travels the country performing magic wherever he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show... Steel, the Magic Marine, Johnson. Jim, thank you, mate, for coming on the Charlie Charlie One podcast. I really appreciate it, especially because I know that you've driven down this morning from North Devon. Yeah, yeah, it's in North where Devon. You, where you spent the weekend surfing? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, man, listen, I, I really appreciate you coming down on the podcast. Before we start, you want me to call you Jim or Steel? I know your nickname Eve. is Steel. How do you prefer to be addressed? Uh, Eve, either or, either or, whatever you... Oh, perfect. So what I'm going to do on these podcasts, mate, is is I bring a guest on, uh, someone I think is going to be interesting. We just chat, converse, and, and I try and find out as much about your life and your story as I can. Yeah. You know, either before the core, during the core, after the core, maybe a bit of a, of a combo. Yeah. So today, um, why don't we start by talking about your career in the core when did you join where did you join where did you come from what did you do all that kind of stuff yeah so with, with the core I joined uh, is end of 2006 uh, so I went through training passed out in 2007 and up to 4 or 5 um, and then 2008 did Herrick 9 with Zulu Company um, and then that rolled through 2010 uh, as then looking at you know either PT or med Med for quotes, PT, because I enjoyed the fizz. Um, so I was an acting corporal, wait, you know, waiting for do my juniors do that. But the med course came up, and I thought, ah, oh, maybe this will be, maybe this will be good. So I went, I went down as a boot neck medic, um, 2010, and that went through 2011. So 2012 came out, um, and then I sort of, I felt like I kind of made the wrong choice there. I wanted to. On, on Herrick 9, uh, I was interested in the medical stuff um, and helping the lads, that was the, the main thing. Um, and on Herrick 9, I, uh, I tried a few guys um, and I thought, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. So you treated um, them before you'd done the medics course? Yeah, right? yeah, so I'd done the, you know, the sort of, the team medic course, the FA1, mm-hmm. FA2, that sort of, I was like, ah, oh, this is, yeah, let, let me get involved with this. Um, and then when I went down, obviously, you're then going back to like a, a, a training establishment phase two, it's tri-service, you're with the army and the navy, and I found it difficult. Um, what, working with those guys? Yeah, it? yeah, it was difficult to then be spoken to by these people who hadn't been to Afghan or Iraq, and they hadn't, you know, they hadn't done anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, yeah, it was, I found that quite hard. And then obviously, because the the medic is very has a very strong naval hierarchy, mm-hmm. it was I found they just didn't have the same mindset as bootnecks, mm-hmm. and I, and I, I clashed a lot. And I remember speaking to Phil Gilby mm-hmm. when I was a, as, as a young medic, saying, "I want a branch transfer. I want to go into PTI." And I remember Phil Gilby there. Like, the branch of the gods yeah, and I was yeah. thinking yeah that, that's, that's what I want to do you know um, but then but then the my Matlow boss who sort of said oh, maybe you'll be getting promoted maybe you know so I was like oh, oh hang on here I'll hang on here and then, and then I just I, I was like this I wasn't happy with this situation so then I put in to go um, special forces medic and I did the the SF med course there um, that sort of in, in 
uh, South Wales and, and Hereford and did the, the swim test and, and that, which has got been they, like the high the high board, ten meter high board at Hereford is is got been. Yeah. I, I, I hated it. But you passed uh, the course. Yeah, yeah, it, it went it went well. Yeah, you, you, it's a bit a bit of fizz and sort of a more advanced trauma, and then also sort of these mock scenarios of dealing with a casualty under fire, getting them into like a wagon or something at night time and then and then treating a cars in the back of a wagon as they're driving like through yeah. through South Wales, you know, with your head torch on, like yeah, trying to yeah. square this square this ladder away. Um, so I, I sort of enjoyed it and then um, and then after after that I was later drafted down to Hull uh, to be a squadron medic down there. Uh, which again was cool because it kind of I think every bootneck looks at doing that and I think especially I know anyone who's ever thought about doing a briefing course and then doesn't always regret it and said, oh, I wish I you know, should have done it. And I'd say, I'd say to any, I'd say, if I, if I was, you know, if I was a young bootnik now, just put in for it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just put it, oh, I'm not ready for it. It doesn't matter. Just put in for it. Mate, I'll, um, I'll, I'll not go it. As soon as I yeah. started training, when I was 18, that was exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I, and I bottled it. I, did, I, I had, you know, massive fear of failure. Yeah. Especially, you know, you start your career that early. And you're keen as hell, and, and I, I just I love those boys down there. They're like gods, and I thought that's what I want to do. Although yeah. I'm really grateful here, and I've just got a green beret. I want to go straight into this. Yeah. And and I I openly admit to anyone I bottled it because I thought if I fail it, I've got 22 years ahead of me, and I'll have that black mark on my record, and yeah, it'll yeah. make me feel bad. But then I thought, well, potentially whenever I get drafted to a different unit and sergeant major sees it, they might think, oh, some young cocky guy he thinks he can do it, didn't make it. Yeah, I, I yeah, understand yeah. exactly where you're coming but from. But that's now. not, but that's not the case at all. Yeah. So, I think yeah. So I, th- I feel like it was it was good to to do that because I felt like go, going down down to be a squadron medic. I felt I kind of kind of like tick the Gucci box a little yes. bit yep. in that. Um, got some crying. Got the you know the C eight. We did my uh, the SF jumps on the BT three eighties and stuff. Which again, I I think I'm just. Well, we should jump in. <laughs> I can't do that. I I'd have like my exit seemed all right, but then I look up and it'd be not a nice open canopy. I'd have twists and stuff, and mm-hmm. I'd be yeah. It was uh, so I didn't super enjoy jumping. Mm-hmm. Um, but by the time I got down to pool, my my mindset changed a little bit anyway, um, and I had a bit of a my outlook on life had changed, and my my priorities in life had changed. So I wasn't that. Well, um, when I was before, before, before I went down there, um, just I guess with things, initially things with Afghan, you know, like seeing and I look back on, I look back on things and I think those those lads that should be here now and are not, and I don't know for what reason. Do you know, mm-hmm. like, it, it bothered me a little bit, uh, but then also um, I lost my dad, and that was a bit of a bit of a booting, like on my my whole perspective on life. And I was like, okay. so, and oh, and then I had an incident as well. I had a G one incident. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, Don't go down that road. Um, well, it was uh, as a kind of there was an incident where there were four guys beating up a lad mm-hmm. and I I got involved I went you know st- like stopped it like any good boot note would yeah right. um, but the first guy uh, I got to I, I hit him uh, and broke his jaw in a couple of places mm. and sort of neutralised the enemy threat yeah spoke to the police they're like cool I said this is who I am they said go back to camp uh, that's cool and then they said can you come in and give a statement went in to give a statement and then they came and they apologised and said look we're really sorry but the CPS won't prosecute you because wow. you said that you hit this guy and it's on CCTV you hit this guy and this guy's got a broken jaw so they want to they want to charge you for GBH right. so then I spent 10 months on bail and I gave I gave them a statement all this I had 10 months on bail um, and I was on a curfew. I wasn't allowed in town after nine o'clock at night, and I was like really pissed off at myself because I thought I've, I've um, 
ruin my career, you know, I, I, was, I was really pissed off. Um, and I went and got a private solicitor, which was like super expensive. Mm -hmm. and I think it cost me like 12 grand. So I spent 12,000 pounds on this court case. I had to sell my car and I'm from the North East. My, my, my dad's just died. I was driving home to see my mum every weekend and then I had to sell my car to pay for the court case. I couldn't go see my mum, but I didn't want to tell my mum that I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. So it was just like this stinking little situation. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't didn't really need to kind of go that way. It went to Crown Court and, and I remember the judge saying, look, this shouldn't have come to court. This guy is innocent. This is self-defence, defence of another. Um, I mean, they've had a lot of guys come and speak to me, give, give good character references. Um, but that, that, that time, that 10 months on bail, so I was on a freeze draft then for a year and I was based in North Devon at the time. I was freeze drafted and I was pissed off at myself. So I stopped drinking and I just, I got, I got into yoga and I got into surfing mm -hmm. and I would, I would drive down to the beach before work, uh, you know, maybe five o'clock in the morning, I'd be paddling out and the sun's sort of rising behind you, if it, you know, on one of the bays, I'm paddling out through the break as I'm hitting through the break and the water's spraying over and then it's like catching the sun as it's coming up. And I was like, this is, this is beautiful. This mm -hmm. is what I want to do is like, sir, I really enjoyed that surfing. And then, so by the time I come to, to pool, I'm at this, this, this unit that's very busy, very sort of fast paced, mm -hmm. fluid organization with a lot of very highly skilled guys. So you don't you don't want to be the guy that drops the ball. You yes. don't you don't want to mess up. So there's a lot of like it's like this high pressure, a lot of self inflicted pressure because yeah, you don't you don't want to mess up. And uh, and I realised that the things that I enjoyed doing, like the the surfing Sorry. and magic, was that was just all on the back burner because this was so busy. Right. And and it was. Um, yeah, I just wasn't. I, I wasn't. I didn't have the mindset of a, mm -hmm. a young, keen marine that I used to have. Yeah. I, I'd kind of changed a bit. Yeah. Um, and so, where did that lead you then? Because obviously, you know, it, it took a lot of graft to get to where you were. Like you said, like you know, you're in this privileged position as an S SF medic. You know, you're working with these these lads down here. A lot of people would love to be doing what you're doing, but yeah. in the back of your mind, you're like, what really? lights my fire is is the surfing and you know living that kind of lifestyle yeah i mean got i got to the point where i was, I was obviously your time your time and life are together mm -hmm. so if i'm trading my time i'm trading a portion of my life mm -hmm. and i thought if i'm trading my life for something i want it to be worthwhile so i was very grateful i know the last trip a lot i remember having when we had, when when we got slammed, like you know, mm -hmm. and I remember going, man, this is this is cool. I got me, you know, lads just dripping all the time. Yeah. I was like, nah, this is cool. But then I thought about it. I'm trading my life for this for this room for this situation. Yeah. If I'm gonna trade my life, I want more than this. Um, and I guess inevitably, I kind of then wanted to start living on my own terms as well. I felt like I was a little bit restricted, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted the two things I wanted was freedom and flexibility. They, that's that's what's great. Which you don't get a massive amount of, especially if you're down at pool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah. did that? Did that then? At that point, did that all start tugging you towards putting your chit in and leaving? Yeah, I start. I mean, it. it, it I'm, throughout your career, everyone thinks of, oh, what if I did this or what if I did that? And you mm -hmm. see guys, you see guys leave and then get, then they're making loads of money and, and obviously in today's world, everything's. As we were talking before, everything's is social media now, mm -hmm. which isn't reality. But right. when you're looking at it, you go, "Shit, that guy's doing well." Yeah, he's doing. You know, he's ah. Oh. And then you look at your current situation, like, "I want to do what he's doing." You know, so I guess for yeah. But now I was always, ah, I kind of love the core. Like, yeah. I love, I love, I love the Marines, um, and it was, yeah, this this little niggle that I had previously this injury that I picked up mm -hmm. kind of wasn't going away and it was becoming harder for me to work especially working outdoors on the boats in the weather in the rain in the wet in the cold and it was this this thing that 
yeah, it wasn't going to get better, and, and I, I was I was downgraded, and they said, you you can't do the job, you can't do the job as a as a medic, you can't do the job as a, a boot neck, you know these kind of okay. and it was right. and and, right. and it, it, I kind of ended up getting medically discharged. Um, so in a way, that. I'm just trying to put myself in your shoes, mate. So in a way, there's it's a couple of things, you know, you you've got this niggling feeling in the back of your mind that you want that freedom and that flexibility and to, to live that kind of life. You're seeing these people on social media and you kind of want to do that. You've had a stinker of a court case and you know, you're down out of pocket, you sold your car, you had you know the tragedy with your dad. And then all of a sudden you've got the injury as well on top of all that. You know, I guess in kind of a way, would that have helped Make that. I mean, it wasn't a decision because you made it discharge, but would it yeah. make the transition easier? Um, I felt the transition would be easier. Man, transition's hard. From, like, from I, the court to city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It really. It ah, caught me off guard, I guess. Because here's the thing as well, mate. What you say about social media, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. You could see a guy that you know, that maybe you've worked with, transition to city street. And it might look like he's doing hoofing yeah, out of city yeah. street, but you don't know the reality of it. You, nah. you know what's going on at, at night, and you yeah. know maybe the hours he's putting in, and if he's happy or if he's miserable. Yeah. So it's a, it's a double edged. Well, I get. I mean, I get a lot of people message. I've had people message me asking for money or message. You know, because they see the experience. They see, nah, not not an expert. No, this was like fat city. <laughs> can't say I, that. Yeah. <laughs> As, as, you know, and it's like obviously because I'm trying to put this image out there mm-hmm. this kind of clean cut image you know I want it to look um, professional and, and this sort of stuff and people see it and they see they see stuff like the, the Bremont they see the events mm-hmm. they see and they go man he is he, but they don't see what's got you to those points they don't right. see all the background stuff yeah. because yeah and no I get that mate so all of these things, you know, then the injury eventually led you to being medically discharged and you struggled initially. What, what, yeah. was, your, what was your plan coming out? Did you, you know, oh, I'm going to do CP, I'm going to do maritime, uh, I'm going to do what everyone else does to, to get by uh, for that? Well, obviously. Did you plan it? You know, if you knew you were going to be medic, did you set up some sort of plan or did you just cough uh, it? <laughs> just cough it. Um, <laughs> I would have, you know, I would have, I would have stayed in the core if I could have stayed in the core, mm-hmm. and but it just wasn't, it wasn't working, no. and um, so then I was thinking, what do, what do I like? And I like, I like, you know, sort of interest in property, mm-hmm. and so I did my resettlement into like a property course, okay, which is yeah, yeah. and um, but then also like this this magic thing that I've been doing, this <clears throat> I, st- I first picked up a pack of cards at four or five. When I saw a guy doing some sleight of hand magic, and I was like, "What is he doing? Yeah, this is ridiculous." And I, you know, I, I sort of from that point of picking the cards up, then it's something that I kept coming back to and kept mm-hmm. coming back to. <laughs> and I guess over time, I progressed with the magic till it got to a level where I'd be performing, I'd be doing bits for the lads, and hey, check check this out, you know. And I remember someone's kind of seeing it and going mate can you come and perform at this charity dinner so like oh. when we did it we um i was doing it down in poles f with doc lambert yeah and i was doing it in the pub and doc lambert said can you come to stonehouse officers mess and do do the the medics rugby challenge okay so perform there and and then off the back of that charlie the mess manager said could you do the officers mess christmas party so I find myself as like a young lunch jack in my lovers in the officer's mess on the top table with the CO and I'm only there because I've got this pack of cards and I was like wow oh, this is like a powerful yeah, yeah like what, yeah, what's yeah. going on here so and and then once once that happened once I started doing mess do's and charity dinners um, I started getting invited to more things mm-hmm. um, and then and then lads were saying hey can you you come do that magic at my wedding so I was like yeah can. so this this magic thing had been growing up throughout my career it kind of got put on hold a little bit whilst I was at pool and um, yeah that 
I was I was medically discharged, and I, I I left service at the end of 2016. So I did wow, ten, so ten years ago. ten years in the corps, okay. and I did. Um, I was get I got booked up for all these. Um, people say, can you come do the Christmas party? November, December. Mm-hmm. So I left, and then I went straight into like this full time performing for all these Christmas parties. And I wasn't, I hadn't intended on being a performer. Right. Um, but I was like, nah, this is cool. I'm doing, and obviously, what, you know, doing, doing magic here for the lads is one thing, but then people saying, look, can you come and do this? I then had to up my game. I, right. had, to, I had to present myself. Um, do, you, do you mind if I just ask? ask? Yeah. Obviously, when you're serving and you're the mess dues, those are freebies. But when yeah. you transition, you need to earn that income. So when yeah, you then start yeah. to be paid, before. Yeah, so then which is why I you mean, need to up your game. It, yeah, and uh, yeah as well. Um, I mean, do in the court obviously getting that salary. It didn't matter if I drove to Stonehouse and performed in the mess. Gotcha. Or, you know, sometimes people would, would give me a bit of cash, sometimes it wouldn't. Mm-hmm. It's a sort of usual thing of ah, oh, I'll give you some wets, and then yeah, on on Zibby Street, that's not gonna yeah, like put fuel in the van. Yeah, it's not. Gonna, yeah, so getting getting some money from doing something like this, I thought. And November, December, Christmas parties, it's a, a very busy season, so I could be doing like quite a lot of gigs. But initially as well, I was saying yes to everything. So I was driving, I was, I was doing loops, like just mm-hmm. round the country constantly. Um, I was, it was a bit overkill on the driving, it was wearing me out a little bit. So mm-hmm. by the time it gets to Christmas, and I'm like, right, that's it, last Christmas party. Right. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's mm-hmm. so, so, so tired. Was there a point when you were serving, when you were going around doing this uh, effectively for free at all these messes, that you kind of went, it, it kind of fell into place, you know, this is what I'm going to do? Or, or again, was it just a, was it a kind of thing when you transitioned and it, it just materialised and grew? I think it was, yeah, it was, more, it was more the demand that grew it mm-hmm. as opposed to me pushing it. So it wasn't, I wasn't leaving going, yeah, I'm going to do my, and, and the things are like, touch a little bit on the van like because when I was leaving I was thinking do you know what I could I loved I loved Spain so like when it would come around to Christmas leave I'd go on Skyscanner I'd get myself a one way ticket I'd fly out to Spain mm-hmm. and I used to do a little loop I'd land in Malaga and I'm like I need to get out of Malaga but I'd go for a, a bit of tapas and a few wets getting back six in the morning well I'll, I'll leave the next day I'll leave the next day so Inevitably, I'd spend, spend a few days in Malaga, right. jump on a bus, go to Granada, go up the Sierra Nevada, snowboard, come back down. The 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 rustic, authentic Spain, the tapas bars, mm-hmm. the wine, the olives. It was beautiful, such a beautiful place. And then Granada to Sevilla, Seville, and again these. And then, and then at some point, I go ah, best go home for Christmas to see my mum. So I'd like. Head back to head back to Malaga, fly home. But I used to, so I, I'd fallen in love with Spain, and yeah, it was on this on this sort of the freeze draft when I got listened to like Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I did too. It's, I was like, ah, oh, this is beautiful. We're like, what's what's my legend? What do I want to do? I want to yeah. travel to Spain. So so I had this itch to go to Spain, and um, initially it was to cycle. I wanted to cycle. I got into road cycling. I thought I'd cycle all through Spain. Um, and I'll I'll get by 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 busking in the tapas bars with magic. So if I could do a bit of magic and I could get a glass of red wine and a bit of tapas, happy days. Yeah. So I was, and, and then um, I got I got with my partner and we're like, obviously it's not, <laughs> you know, the bike thing. Now it sort of it, it built up and it, it became a van. So I was like, right, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this van. I'm gonna kit it out. And I had this vision of being parked on the cliff top, looking out over the ocean, with the back doors open, sitting on a bare wood floor in the van, a little fire going, drinking a beer, watching the sun go down into the ogging. And I was like, this vision drove this plan to do the van. And then I thought, if I'm gonna do the van, how do I fund the van? How do I, how do I, so then I was thinking, I'm gonna be in the van anyway, I'm gonna be parked up on a beach, I'm gonna be surfing. But when I'm not surfing, if I come, and I just put my board, the back doors open up and then they open like that. So you've almost got like a, you know this. If I put my surfboard here, 
on some trestles mm -hmm. and put like a wicker bamboo thing around it. I've got like this surfboard bar. I could put a card map on it, right. be doing magic, have the music playing, got speakers and doors playing music, and we could make. I've seen in Portugal like these little kind of street vendors, like these little push along carts, and literally it's just got this big metal lemon press thing. And they've got they've got a basket of fresh lemons. They've got bolted on this big lemon press, mm -hmm. and and then like a load of crushed ice in a glass, freshly squeezed lemon, a bit of alcohol, boom. And I thought because it, so initially I was thinking, ah, oh, like I I love cake. I was thinking <laughs> like a coffee and cake bar, but then straight away the the cake. If I didn't sell it, I'm going to be scramming it. I'm going to be getting fat. Yeah. You know? no. and, and coffee, like the coffee machine, obviously they're quite expensive, mm -hmm. and they need they need power to to get them going. Yeah. Uh, so then, so then I was thinking, okay, what's more sort of practical? And, and a bottle of a bottle of alcohol, you know, um, get get a little ice box, you know, crushed ice, mm -hmm. fresh lemons, and that, you know, and it'd just be mega Bobby basic. This kind of cards and cocktails bar. Or magic and nice. yeah. so so I thought this is how I could make money to fund me living this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I was like, yeah, this this will be hoover. That's what I then wanted to do. But the magic, the magic went. The ball was rolling. The magic and the magic just went, and I, nice. I, I chased after it and got my got my suit and got involved with like Bremont and having that short stint down at pool kind of opened a few more doors and there's some I mean some some hoofing lads doing some hoofing stuff and I've got some friends the mad explorers who are doing their island crossings, the expeditions, uh a couple of lads who set up through dark, this kind of outdoor oh, clothing yeah. gear, re real good stuff. Um and, and these 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 overlapping circles. So now I found myself in London a lot, going to a lot mm -hmm. of events and the, the kind of the the surf bum thing got put on a shelf for a bit whilst I guess as the magic marine mm -hmm. that that got established. So So you yeah. definitely got that, that freedom and flexibility you were looking for. Yeah, but then I was kinda of shooting the freedom and flexibility down with sort of being a victim of my own success Overwatch. because then I was just driving all over the place right. and I feel like only very recently, just now, I'm kinda of getting to a place that I'm a lot happier. I can. I want to be based in North Devon, mm -hmm. so I've got the swell. Obviously, I'm going to have to jump to and from London. Because that's where the money um, is. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so. But but if I can have it on a little bit more, instead of going, yeah, 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 I'll do a gig. I'll do a gig. I mean, but the other, the other, a weekend, the other month, I was in Manchester on a Friday. Mm -hmm. So I drove to Manchester, did that Friday, Saturday. I drove down to High Wycombe, just north of London. And then on the Sunday, I was meant to be here at CTC for for the Mothering Sunday ball, uh, Mothering Mother Sunday at the Met here. So then I booked a flight from Newcastle to Exeter. Okay. I was in High Wycombe, so then I was going to try and get back up to Newcastle to get my flight, but the clocks went forward, so I lost an hour. And instead of normally my my dues are like evening gigs, this was a this was a lunchtime gig, so I, I had like not much time and I had to just drive so I did Manchester High Wycombe Exeter back up to the North East so it's just this wow you know North East North West yeah. South you know mm -hmm. you know and that was just in a week and I was like oh man I need to calm it down a little bit yeah um, it's, it's difficult isn't it and, and we were having this kind of conversation offline before we started recording about how I think sometimes as bootnecks you, you know that you're good at a lot of things, and if you're not, you just you just hammer it until it happens. But you you're very humble yeah. with with your capabilities and your skill sets, and like when you go out into the civilian world. So my, my point is, it's almost sounds like what you need to do is charge more money, yeah, so you can work less. But I I know you maybe we've been friends a little while now, and it's difficult for you to say at them conversations. I, yeah, I find yeah, it yeah. difficult, but. Yeah, from what you're saying, that's almost what it says. But I think it's that you know, obviously, it's you've been getting paid every month, whether whether you've worked one hour a day or twenty four hours a yes. day. You, you've been getting paid the same amount, and then to come out and to to try and put a value on your time and go, oh yeah. So I used to just I I try and just work it off like a minimum wage kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I would look at drive time and performance time. So if I've got six hours to a gig, 
six hours back, 12 hours drive time, two hours at the gig, you know, 14 hours at eight quid an hour, where, you know, work out that for, for time and then work out my mileage for fuel, yeah. which would give me like a rough figure because I, you know, there's a lot of times where I'd be doing a gig and I'd be paying to do it. I'd be paying yeah. in travel mm-hmm. and time, you know, oh, I'll make a hundred quid here. And people say, oh mate, it's not bad. You know, you get a hundred quid or you get 200 quid for literally doing some magic for an hour or two hours. And, yeah. but it don't, and, and it would, that would be the case if I lived at that location, mm-hmm. but all the travel and then, I mean, recently from, from December last year, my little brother's been traveling around with me. So the, what I've been earning then is then covering both of us. So if we're catching the trains, it's yeah, like two train huge. tickets. You know, if we have a Freddy and we miss the train, we're just standing on the wrong platform and we're watching that train and we're like, yeah. Like the, the yeah, so then having to buy it on the day. Another, another two tickets, yeah, food, because I can't ask him to be paying to come with me. So right. it, it eats into it a lot. Um, it, it's funny what you're saying about when lads go or someone says, Oh, this isn't bad, you know, you get two hundred pounds for a couple of hours magic. Yeah. So I'm I'm like you, I listen to a lot of these books and, and podcasts and stuff, and I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this totally, right? But I was listening to this story once and it it may have been about Picasso, maybe, or someone some an artist in France, basically a famous artist. And it, it may be true, it may not be, but the story goes that they were sat outside a cafe in, in Paris having a coffee and a woman came up and recognised them and said, yeah. oh, you're that, you're that Picasso guy, yeah, famous yeah. artist, aren't you? Could you draw me a picture? So she gave him a napkin, she gave him a pen, and he you know, looked at her, sketched this thing out, and then went to give it to her and he said, that's a, a thousand francs, please. Yeah. And she went, a thousand francs? It only took you two minutes. He went, yeah. no, 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 no. It's took me my entire life yeah. to be able to do this. Yeah. That's why it's, and that's the same with you. They say, oh yeah, okay, 200 pounds for a couple hours, right, that's really good. It's not a couple hours. It's since the day you were at four or five and you saw that guy doing magic and you decided that's what you wanted to do. All those hours, all those freebies, all those miles, everything you built up, the social media, everything you've done, the networking, that's why you're getting paid that much. Yeah. And mate, from what I see in, uh, you know, in our friendship and I've seen you on social media, that's just gonna increase, mate. And, yeah, I've, I've, and, and rightly so, mate. But, but I think what you do is incredible, man. And that thing, my kids still think I can produce a Kinder egg out of my bare hand after you showed me that lighter trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They loved it, man. They loved it. It's um, it's awesome. But what was, from memory, what is the the best or the worst thing you've ever done? Either from a performance point of view, where you've yeah. completely messed it up, or you've you've nailed it, or you've been at an event with I don't know, A-list celebrities, uh, people you look up to, and you've always wanted to meet something like that. So the, I mean, best. I had yeah had a week in London where I was working on a, a film set with Angelina Jolie and we were chatting nice. there. Yeah. I was working. Me and my bro, we we were living in a van. We we're hanging out. We had the motorbike with us for getting in and in and out of London. And then so we with Angelina Jolie, and then randomly we've got a mutual friend. So my brother said to her. Oh, we've got this mutual friend. This is you know someone that her and Brad would go for dinner with, and all you know, and, and okay. she's like, oh, sh- who are you guys? You know, yeah. and she so we had this little chat with her. Then we ride on the motorbike in town, and we've seen Orlando Bloom. Okay, and we you know chat with Orlando because again there was another film that I was going to be working on, um, but then I wasn't, and we sort of chat about and and again mutual friends mm-hmm. and and then and then we've seen Ian McKellen and obviously I've seen Tom, you Tom Hardy Tom Jason Hart, Momoa yeah. all these guys and it, and it was I had a week a week in London where there's like Angelina Jolie Orlando Bloom mm-hmm. Jason Momoa Tom Hardy like you know and if someone had said to me oh yeah you're going to have this week and you're going to meet these I, I would say it wouldn't it couldn't possibly happen mm. you wouldn't have all these people all in the same sort of area like it, it was just such a random random weird yeah. week I think the magic the magic sort of taken me to some some mad places and, and I feel like I, f- I sort of feel like I'm getting more on it and I want to drive it 
and I, I, I'm sort of getting more of a vision of where I want to drive it because up until now I've just been oh yeah I'll come do some magic here I'll come do some and it wasn't really there wasn't any sort no of structure. forward no, no there structure. wasn't structure right. no. yeah and um, you know this is, again this is from an outsider's point of view I can kind of see with that story you told then you know you popping up doing a cameo in a movie or you know like your big names like uh, you got your Dynamo and these stuff yeah for me, Paul Daniels back in the day, but yeah. you know, the TV shows, appearances, you know, that kind of, that's all kind of stuff. When you get around those people and you start doing these things, these are all offshots of it, aren't they? And yeah. sometimes, although you, you're talking about creating a structure and a plan and a, and a direct path to go down, sometimes these random things happen, yeah. which could take it to a whole nother level you just got to run with, you know? And, yeah, and that's, yeah. that's where I see, I, I see him on well, Instagram. Yeah, I feel like there's, and mate, there's some, I'm gonna put some, I've got some cool stuff to put on Instagram when when a film comes out as working with Gerard Butler on this film. Oh, stop dropping these names, and I man. Did, <laughs> I did some magic for him and then the next one. Oh, you showed me that video you said yeah, yeah. yeah, he invited me to his bit and then we chatting and I was very fortunate that a bootneck followed me in and just kinda of filmed it. He kinda of filmed it, me and and I'm chatting to Gerard Butler and, and I'm saying, yes, I've got this van, and I'm kind of like rolling in this van, and I go to the service station in the morning to get a shower before mm-hmm. I come on set, and, and there was another bootneck, uh, uh, you know, a brilliant, brilliant lad, uh, Sammy Laird, who's big in the BJJ, big yeah, in the real yeah, he's, he's, yeah, oh, yeah. I met I met Sam at four or five, and he used to just time in and not back then on the mats, and put me off BJJ for 10 years, <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I, I chat to him, I was like, Sam, where, where, are you, where are you staying then whilst we're down here working on this film? And he goes, I'll probably just keep in my car. I was like, mate, come in the van. Mm-hmm. And, and initially, I hadn't, I hadn't re- and then I was like, I, rem- I remember you, I remember you. And then um, he just, for a week, me and him just, just rolled. You know, we, we, we lived together in the van, we'd mm-hmm. get the works, and we just chatted and chatted, and it was, it was so cool. But then, yeah, so I'm with Gerard Butler, I'm saying, yeah, get, get a wash at the service station. Joe was like, mate, do you want to use my shower here? You know, like, nice. And um, I'm not, I was like, nah, nah. But what I should have done as a, as a good boot now, because I should have just got naked and go, yeah, yeah. I'm just right down the spot, strip <laughs> yeah, off in yeah. front of the Gerald Butler. But then, but then, so then, oh man, yeah. So like, I went to see my, my friend who's friends with Orlando linked me in with this thing and I seen Orlando bloom. And mm-hmm. then this girl, who we sat near said, oh, have you, oh, she, no, later on she messaged me something about this, some other magician, have you checked this, this guy out, he's ridiculous. So I looked at this guy and the latest video he had was with Gerard Butler, so I'm watching this and he's trying to show Gerard Butler this chick and I can hear Jerry going, yeah, yeah, but this guy, this guy produced from, and I'm like, shit, he's, he's talking about me to this, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, to feel like, I feel like maybe I've had a bit of a lasting uh, effect on that, yeah, and, which was, yeah, that was really cool. Mate, okay. do me a favour quickly, can you just check that still oh, close? Yeah. Yeah. It might come up after an hour. Oh, right, yeah, sorry, we're dipping on. We're on 37 minutes, mate, and it's, yeah. Still it's, rolling good? Yeah, 37, 45, oh, 46, right. yeah, it seems to be rolling. Right, yeah. two seconds. We'll just cut this bit and then I'm going to finish off and we'll just edit it back in from that. Um, so what's the wire scheme you've ever done? No, oh, stop, 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 stop. stop, wait, Shh. I didn't need enough time. Okay. I, I don't know, I can do a wire scheme. Yeah, go on, I'll think of something. Okay, so what's the worst or the the weirdest gig you've ever done? Maybe where you, you know, let's say, as a boot knight, I know you, you inflict a lot of high self-standards on yourself, like we all do. Where's the one where you thought, ah, oh, I didn't quite do what I want to do there, or just some random weird stuff happened? I mean, after after a lot of gigs, I'm normally like, I need to be better. I need to be better. That's the so, big from you, though. Yeah, yeah. So there's always, I mean, there's always going to be room for improvement, but there's a massive room for improvement. I need to be, I need to be operating at such a higher level, and I feel I sort of berate myself a little bit. Like you, you know, I need to everything, every aspect. You know, I, I kind of, um, I drop the ball a lot. <laughs> Um, but at, gig, at gigs, it, yeah, it all seems to go well and it seems to be well received. Um, I'm not uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever had like some... But this is good though, the fact that you're struggling to think of a bad gig is a good sign. 
yeah. you know? Um, well, I've, I've certainly, uh, I know you said you dropped the ball, yeah. but I've certainly, I don't know if that's obvious to the person watching, because I've never seen it. It's probably just you uh, inside thinking, oh, I can't Well, I do something and go like, oh, I'm not happy with that. I'm not, and I look around and I think, okay, yeah. But I, uh, yeah. I feel that I feel though as well. Just again, very recently, I've I've had a bit of a mindset change, mm-hmm. and I feel a lot more positive about everything. Good. So it feels like so that recently I worked in Henley on Thames on Friday, um, Wednesday as at Bremont uh, with Nims. Okay. Um, Hoovering bloke. I might have to get him on the podcast soon. That yeah, guy's yeah. Nuts. He, he, soon. yeah. I remember, like I said to you, when he, when he would come down, we'd do some med stuff at the pool, and he was he would show me videos of him high altitude climbing, like mm-hmm. these ridiculous videos. I'd show him some magic. Yeah. And um, yeah, but but yeah, Wednesday and Friday, I definitely definitely felt good. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, this is, and I think just the mindset change. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like it's getting getting better. Well, I've got the, the big adventure. Shall I mention about the big Well, that's, that's what I want to talk about next because yeah, we've, yeah. we've covered all the, uh, you know, your time in the core and circumstances led to medical discharge and how the, the magic thing took off. You talked a little bit about the van, which I love, the whole yeah. travel around, live out the back of a van thing. So, as well as an ex bootneck and a magician, you're an adventurer. And we've talked before about some big plans you've got, I believe, for your brother. Yeah, so yeah. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so, I mean, jumping right back to something you mentioned earlier on, and we're talking about the transition onto Civvy Street. I was craving freedom and flexibility, and I thought, getting onto Civvy Street, um, uh, this is hoof, and this mm-hmm. is going to be awesome. And I was very aware that I wasn't going to get cash every month. Okay. Oh, so I had a, a brief stint with the army before the corps, which is where I did my Iraq and I did, so like from the age of 18, I went into the military. So all the way through school, all the way through the military, every year you, you're moving up, you're moving forward, you've always got that forward uh, projection and you, you're heading in that, you've got direction, you've got structure, you've got discipline and obviously pay. And then I, th- I was only looking at the pay aspect. I thought, well, I'm gonna leave, leave the, the Marines, I'm not gonna get, paid but I'll be able to make money doing something mm-hmm. so I wasn't worried about that and then all of a sudden I found myself I found myself sitting back at my mum's house with no direction mm. no purpose no structure no discipline I don't need to get out of bed I don't need to yeah I didn't, I didn't need, and it was it's very it, you, you very quickly get onto this downward spiral you you wrap on you you're not doing as much fizz mm-hmm. Um, you're not eating so great but having a lack of purpose is very damaging mentally mm-hmm. damaging you need to have and, and I looked over at my little bro and he had this depression thing going on he struggled a bit and I thought what what we have to do is put something there to work towards so we've got direction and we've got purpose and I said, right, let's just strip everything away. What do we enjoy doing? We like adventure, motorbikes, mm-hmm. magic, history. Let's do something with that. And my little bro, he's like, ah, oh, I want like this classic Royal Enfield and all this. So then we start looking at Royal Enfields they're built in India. So okay, like just buying one here is cheating. Let's go, let's buy one in India, let's get one there where they're made. Yeah. Um, so we're like, okay, yeah, let's do that. How do we get it back? Well, we could ride it back. Nice. So then we're like, okay, let's ride from India to the UK. Okay. Let's do the, the Himalayas, let's let's do all this. As we're going along, I'll do magic. You know, magic is so powerful. Mm-hmm. Like I've I've seen it on lads in the core where I can do magic and for a moment I can take them out of whatever problems are going on in their head, I can take them out of that mm-hmm. and just have this this bubble, have them in this 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 moment of kind of wonder, almost like childlike yeah, kind of mesmerized. Wow, you know, because with magic, you were taking something that you know is physically impossible, mm-hmm. 
and showing you that. Yeah. And you're like that. I know that that's not possible. I don't know how on earth you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And and you forget about what's yeah. going. And 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 magic is really powerful. So I thought, right, let's ride these motorbikes. Let's let's push through. Um, let let's perform magic in the villages that we go. Now my brother is a he's a, a rugged adventurer and a history academic. He got a first in history. He's very very bright. He's a writer and. He, he, he's got this stuff going on so he's the, the route that we're going through he's going to narrate the path so we're going to be on the old silk road on parts of the old silk road the history of that road um, the history of the, the people that swept those lands before us Genghis Khan Alexander the Great mm -hmm. Marco Polo Babur all these these you know oh this is where this happened this is. and also the dawns of civilization. we're going to be riding through the dawns of civilization that, that were built out of sand over 5,000 years ago. He's, he's a very, you know, he's going to present this history. I'm going to perform the magic. And also the history of magic. Magic cards came from, from China. Cards were carried by soldiers invading, coming from the East. And that injected it into the West a thousand years ago. When, and obviously with, with cards came the ancient art of magic. Mm -hmm. So this is this is really cool. And then there's another another sort of link. So me and my brother, we we're both born in the the Viking city of York. We're we're like that. Yeah, let's embrace this fight. We're born. We're born in the Viking city. Mm -hmm. We're Vikings, right? And that's why you know it. Junior's party. We're like we have Dressed you up know, as a Viking. We're, we're being, yeah, yeah, we're being Vikings. And yes. then my brother discovered that our last name. Is a Viking name, so we're like, ah, oh, we're actually Vikings, you know. So, let, so we've got, and the, the Vikings pushed from the west coming in here. You've got this this movement here, and there's a lot of stuff that we're going to tie it in with, and and ideally we want to um, make this this adventure magic and history. It's going to be two Viking brothers mm -hmm. riding, you know, riding on this epic journey. This is what I said just now, mate. You know these off shots that I said about. If you could get them into a documentary, yeah, that, that'd easily get well, picked thing, up. We, we, well, we thought. I mean, that's now we're pushing into like unknown territory because we don't know about documentaries and, mm -hmm. and film. Um, we've got this idea. We're going to do this thing, and we thought, well, we might as well film it. So if we're going to film it. We might as well. We might as well film it. High high quality content. Yeah. Decent stuff. So that we can use it. And initially it was like, let's make a short film, take it to the film festival, let's make a documentary, let's let's make something here, um, uh, off the back of it, because then I'm looking at what, what's the fallout from that, off the back of it, we can tour around the UK, we can book venues, like even if it's a village hall, you know, five quid or something, just book, uh, or like climbing centres or something like that, and we can, we can play 10 minute short film of our trip, we can talk and I can perform magic at my the events and stuff. And stuff at the yeah, end, yeah, and then we're thinking, yeah, what if we could produce it? What if we could pitch and get it as a series on TV to show people this is it's like like the hairy bikers. It's a long way round, exactly, right. but with history and magic, yeah. Um, and it's yeah this, and then and then we we keep doing this. We we could go down into into Europe we could go we could do stuff and do this adventure magic um, so there's like longevity in it I guess this is this yeah. is where I definitely want to be uh, is doing doing this where I can I want to grow the beard get my axe <laughs> go, go do magic you know t take the suit off because I'm always in this suit you know um, and go yeah go do this I feel like that's um, there's definitely something there but yeah this is this this unknown world now where we need to link in with people that can help us to get it produced to okay. get an audience to to get that exposure well i don't know if i can but if i can or or the charity can in any way try and hook you up with those contacts let me know mate because uh, i'd love to see that and i'm sure there are hundreds of thousands of other people that would love to see that i know there's definitely eight it's definitely eight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be nine i'll be number nine yeah, yeah i've got nine people who said to me that definitely watch it Man, I, I think it would be amazing. I think everything that you've done since leaving the course has been amazing. I've seen you perform 
live and in the flesh. And I, I, like we said just now, I still don't know how you do all this stuff. I've got loads of new stuff to show um, you as well. And, and I want to see it all, man. But listen, thank you, mate. Um, I appreciate Cheers, you man. taking the time to come down here. Um, I'm, I'm just fascinated with all the stuff you do, man. I think it's incredible. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to come down here. No, oh, mate, anytime, anytime. Yeah, I just love the privilege. diversity of what lads are doing when they leave the corner. Now it's not just the I'm going to do CP, I'm going to do maritime, yeah. and you know just do all that to pay my house off. Lads are now embracing what they're passionate about, yeah, and going yeah. out and doing that, mate. And, and you show that. You know? oh, thank you. But listen, where can people find out more and can they can follow your adventures? What social mate, media are you on? So in, Instagram is the main thing that I push out on. What's your handle? And it's at the Magic Marine. At the Magic Marine. Yeah. And that's the one, Facebook or Twitter or anything? Yeah, if it, I, I think you'll find me at uh, the Magic Marine mm -hmm. on, on everything really, uh, or Steel Johnson. But the, the, my website, uh, the website's not super interactive, but it's just themagicmarine.com. Mm -hmm. But Instagram's the main one, the Magic Marine. That's, that's, the, that's where I kind of push, push okay. things out. Well, what I'll do, anyway, we're going to wrap up now, but I'll get all those details off you. I will include yeah. them in the description when I upload this, so people can Thank just you. click on it and get out there. And um, follow your journey, man. See it, because it's, it's awesome. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's great. Man. Thank yeah. you, dude. Appreciate Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, man. Let's go do some jiu-jitsu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. That was Steel, the Magic Marine Johnson, and I'm sure you'll agree, as I said at the beginning of this podcast, he's a very, very interesting guy that leads a very, very interesting life. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the Charlie Charlie One podcast. As always, we'd really appreciate it if you could take a minute to leave us a review, leave us a star rating, and share the podcast throughout your social media, throughout your Royal Marines networks, and help us get the word out there. Because we plan to bring you a lot more interesting stories like this as we progress. And we'd like to grow this to be one of the biggest podcasts in the country. But we can't do that without your help. So please, when you get a minute, subscribe to the podcast. Give us a rating and share it around. <laughs>